Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure really to introduce a couple of my friends to you. Um, Mike Simon is the president of Simon Solutions. And we go way back, I think, to something like 13, don't we? 12 or 13. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kyle uh, Micklinger, did I get that right? It's Minkler, but that's Minkler. That's Minkler, I'm so sorry, <laughs> Kyle. And uh, so we've been working together on uh, Charity Tracker. And that means that they're tracking the results for getting ahead uh, graduates. Uh, they do self assessments during getting ahead and then they do self assessments later and again and again. And we gather all that information. So they provide us with reports about uh, stability scales, uh, resources, and the development of their resources and their return on investment financially and so on. And, um, you know, I knew they were doing a lot of really good work uh, out there in the rest of the world. And, you know, meanwhile, we were building bridges communities and, and using our common language to get those different sectors working together. And I didn't realize just to the extent of which uh, Simon Solutions was building communities too. Until I was invited to that uh, conference they had in, in April of this year. And um, I think they had 600 people on that. And I'll tell you, I was, I was really impressed by the, the kind of conversations that I sat in on and the, and the sophistication of those communities that were doing really great work. And I thought, you know, those of us in our Bridges communities, we have to know what you're doing. Uh, I think that, um, and of course, that's the purpose, the purpose of, this, of this webinar. But uh, we sort of have the common language that brings people from different classes together. But you've been able to bring people together that are from foundations, and united ways and people that are doing community development work along with the different sectors. And I, I just thought uh, that, is, that is something that we've not been able to do and would like to be able to do. And I think you have the technology and the language and the ideas that we need to hear about. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing the details and of course, we're going to put Mike on first, and and uh, and he can give us the big picture, and then uh, Kyle can uh, dig into the details and tell us how it works. So, Mike, uh, take it away. Uh, it's our pleasure to be here today, and uh, we're so uh, grateful and uh, for the longstanding relationship we've had with AHA Process, Bridges Communities, and Getting Ahead, and we've. We're, we're extremely thankful that we're both in this together. We're, we're doing the same thing. We're, we're trying to do more than just help people get by. We are trying to help people get ahead to a better quality of life. And so for the next few minutes, I'm just going to show you a big picture from a 30,000 foot perspective of how we got started and where we're at now in developing that more uh, collaborative approach that's now happening in communities. And with your permission, I'll share my screen with you, let you see uh, some of the things that I'll share. And there'll be videos. Most of these will be videos and we'll see if, how people are actually doing it uh, in their communities. And so we start out with who we are. We're Simon Solutions. We're, we're a technology company. And uh, we provide uh, helping agencies all across the country with uh, innovative technology tools. And these technology tools enable all the helping agencies in a community to work together for common good and greater impact. And so people are taking our tools and as Phil has often said about his tools, they're innovating with us. And therefore, so they're developing solutions to complex challenges. And this is happening in over 2000 cities in, in 49 states. And so our goal is to advance a more network, a collaborative and comprehensive approach to transforming lives and communities. And when I say by communities, we're transforming the helping systems in communities. But, you know, people often ask, well, how in the world did, did you get started? I mean, what, what was the brainchild behind this? Well, boy, it all happened because of Hurricane Katrina. And, you know, people say that uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And so we had Hurricane Tr Katrina hit our Gulf Coast in uh, 2005. Yeah. We're in Alabama. And it impacted... Uh, 
people all over the Gulf Coast who started moving north and east and west. And they, we had about 330 families that came into our uh, part of northeast Alabama. And so as a result of that, uh, in the aftermath of that, we had uh, community and faith-based leaders come to us and say, look, you know, we did our best, but we don't think we were working together and efficiently and effectively distributing resources where they needed to go. So they came to us and they said, can you provide us a web-based solution in which we all could use and something that would make our jobs easier, more productive, and we could reduce duplication of efforts and perhaps become more resourceful as a community. Well, as a result of that, uh, we together, we created Sean Tracker, which stands for the Shoals Emergency Assistant Network. Uh, today, uh, it was launched in 2006, but today it now serves about six counties. And you can see of the multi-sector par partners that are in there, there's about 94 organizations that are working together. And you can see the results of, of some of the collective action that has happened as a result of this. But what was really going to be uh, just a local solution actually turned into a national platform. But I want you to hear from the actual people who were some of the originators of the development of the Charity Tracker software that is known across the, the country today. Listen to them as they talk about how it's made a difference uh, in their communities. Watch this video. So when we went to Simon Solutions for Charity Tracker, we found that it was affordable. We found it was easy to teach people how to use it. Um, you know, that they could, as long as they knew how to type, pretty much they could figure out how to use Charity Tracker. And that was our main um, force in looking for something customizable um, that was easy to use and very affordable. It is extremely user friendly. And I have met church receptionists who are 80 years old. <laughs> who can use this and, and who think it's absolutely wonderful. The ease of use, the web-based access. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, you're not tied to a desk or network, as long as you've got internet access, you can get to Charity Tracker, log into it and help your clients. I mean, even if it's a laptop out in the field, it doesn't have to be tied to a desk in an office. I don't have to pick up the phone trying to call someone from another organization to verify you know that this person has been helped it's in front of me on a computer screen it has just it has made my job 100 percent easier it enables us to help people that we would not even know that they needed help when we come in the morning there is a bulletin that pops up that says we need a mattress set for the jones family well we got a mattress set donated yesterday so we can respond to that other ministry in town. I had a situation where I had a gentleman come in from another county. We could not help him. I just got on Charity Tracker, I posted the situation, and within 10 minutes I had three offers to help this gentleman. Charity Tracker makes everything much more efficient for me because it tracks their assistance in real time. If it's a disaster situation and you got Red Cross Salvation Army Community Action and four or five others sitting there trying to help, each one of you may be able to offer them a different service, but you're going to know what each one of you is offered because you can look at the assistance tab and see, okay, the Red Cross is going to help you get a place to stay. Let me get you some food and clothes and then I'll refer you over here and they're going to help you get some furniture for that. Okay, uh, I mean, it helps you be able to coordinate resources among other agencies more than you will ever experience without it. Um, it's connected churches that would have never connected before and agencies. And it's built a bridge between agencies and churches that was not there. And let's face it, you know, we sometimes see the negative aspect a lot uh, when people come and they abuse the system, you know. And that's gonna happen. It, I don't know that you could really create a system that can't be abused. but. That's one of the benefits here is uh, you do help really lower the ability to abuse. Uh, but that's kind of the negative. That's the, the negative. There's so many more positives that it, rather than keeping somebody from something, it helps you get to where you want to be. And that's what's cranked us up about. So it, it, it allows us to be more cohesive, I think. Um, 
I've lived and worked in this community as a social worker for many years, and organizations don't talk to one another. This one is doing this, this one is doing that. There's a lot of overlapping. It's allowed all of us to actually have a part in helping the community better. We're furthering those dollars. We're using those monies in the best way possible. Um, and by doing that, we're able to help more people. We're able to um, track those assistance records. We're able to see what the community is doing to help itself. And it's because of Charity Trunker. It's because it's creating this wonderful network. And I really think it's appropriate for anyone. Anyone who offers help in any way. And, and like I said, this was only meant to be a local solution for Northwest Alabama, but word got out, got out rather quickly, in fact. And it spread all across Alabama, and now it's going across the country. What I'm going to show you is one of the largest uh, charity tracker networks in the country. They have 300 organizations in Charleston, South Carolina, and they have about 900 caregivers working together. And I'll give you an example of what it's meant to them, especially during COVID-19. Watch this. For over 11 years, Charity Tracker has been provided to the community by Trident United Way. We provide it to over 300 churches, agencies, and faith-based organizations in the community. With Charity Tracker, um, we're able to input all the information that uh, we uh, have on a client. So then I can pull reports each month to know what is the impact uh, that we have on the community. How many families uh, did we serve and, and how many members were in each family. It allows us to be paperless. It allows us to share information to serve clients more efficiently and effectively. It also allows us to stay in touch with clients who may not be coming out as much. Charity Tracker was invaluable during the pandemic. It helps to make our work more efficient. It also allows us to engage volunteers who can actually make those phone calls from home. We could not have managed our clients during COVID-19 without Charity Tracker. And now the great thing about what's been happening, how people are innovating with the tools, we're now moving into what Phil has, has encouraged us to work toward in developing a system that will not only help people get by, but also will help them get ahead. And so communities are developing a, what we call comprehensive coordinated care. So they're providing a pathway for people to go from crisis all the way to sustainability. Uh, Charleston was one of the first in the country to develop this pathway. Trans we call it a transformational roadmap. Now it's developing in Huntsville, Alabama. I'd like for you to see how that is happening there. I'm Tommy Battle. I'm the mayor of the city of Huntsville. And, and my role here is, is more to talk about um, community connections, charity trackers, and the things that they're doing in our community. Um, you know, it's a great uh, day when you have, have nonprofits who come together and nonprofits who work together. Uh, and, and they work together for the betterment of the community. Uh, that's what Charity Tracker Community Connections allows us to do. It allows us to check on each other, see what they're doing, make sure we don't have a duplication of services, make sure that we have uh, get the most efficient use out of our uh, donor dollar. And as we do that, we end up with an organization that uh, kind of shapes the way that we um, uh, we provide services, that we give money, that we um, uh, help those who are a little bit less fortunate and as we do that, we can make sure that we can spread that dollar further and further. We have case managers that work uh, specifically with adults and children clients. And Charity Tracker helps us go into that system to see what organizations are already working with our clients. And uh, so that we're not duplicating those efforts and maybe better linking our clients with services. At Asbury Church, we use Charity Tracker to uh, keep track of how the community is helping those in need and uh, if we see something posted on there that we think we can help with then we will try to respond to that. We posted our uh, open house event on Charity Tracker and we're able to share that with all the other nonprofits so that they could refer people to that event and it's also a great recruitment tool for us and just letting the other nonprofits know about what we have to offer and maybe they can refer their clients to us. I mean there are 
literally hundreds of, of social service nonprofits in our community. The only way that we can effectively serve is by working together. You know, we, we can avoid duplication of services. We can learn from one another. We come in to be a part of a group like this, we're going to be changing a little bit of the way we work because we should. Because if that's, if that's the way the service is going to be provided, then that's a better way to provide service so you reach more people. And you see through Charity Tracker so many people that I may have a resource that I don't need, and without Charity Tracker, it's probably just going to sit at my organization. Um, but by sharing resources, we can just all help one another. No one resource does everything. So working side by side is, is a very powerful tool. So it makes perfect sense if you're really wanting to serve your clients and serve the community to the fullest, that you partner with others and, and work together to find solutions. For um, the agencies who just started working in Charity Tracker, they really are getting used to the system and developing the full capabilities and the funding for that has been vital to get people to try it out and, and see what it's about and learn, learn what they can do. You think about April uh, 27th, uh, when that tornado hit in 2011, we had thousands of people that we were having to uh, provide for. Food is one thing, but you had people that had lost dad, including family members, and so uh, I, I saw the best in our community. I think that we've got the full gamut here where we can truly make a difference in people's lives. And um, I just want to thank everyone for their participation. Uh, alone, you can do nothing, but together this group will be able to touch so many lives. Great news! Now it's possible for all helping agencies across the community to work together more efficiently and effectively to transform the lives of children, adults, and families. Charities, churches, schools, food banks, hospitals, and more are learning how to align their unique strengths and collectively tackle tough community challenges with greater impact and success. Together, they have created an innovative solution for comprehensive, coordinated care that can help everyone live a healthier, happier, and more meaningful life. This solution is used by thousands of helping agencies in over 1,600 American cities, and now moving into other countries. Making this possible is easy to use and low-cost technology that makes it faster and easier for helping agencies to find and collectively coordinate local resources in more powerful and productive ways. Results are unprecedented and often described as revolutionary. Individuals and families gain greater access to information and resources that pave the way to better quality of life and a brighter future. Helping agencies gain greater peace of mind knowing that they are an integral part of a collaborative and comprehensive solution for transforming people's lives. Funders, including donors, foundations, businesses and governments, gain greater assurance that the right resources get into the right hands at the right time. And the whole community benefits through greater knowledge sharing and collective wisdom, which sets the stage for cross-sector collaboration, collective action and the development of lasting solutions. Ready to be amazed? Contact one of our community impact specialists who will show you how to make this happen in your community. So there you have it. So that's what's evolved over since 2006 and where we're at today. We're amazed at, at what is going on, Phil. And uh, some, some people describe the results as unprecedented. Some people say they're revolutionary. Well, I've seen enough of, of uh, your work in different places that I'm a, I'm a believer on that. Uh, that that really tells the story well, and I think that uh, you know we have, I think we're in 48 states and six countries. We're sort of growing together, but not completely together. See, and it seems to me like we could be coordinating a whole lot more than we are uh, with uh, with the work you're doing on collaboration as well. But that's really sophisticated stuff, and I really really honor it. 
So Kyle's going to tell a story too. Yeah, so thank you, Mike, Phil, Lynn. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Kyle, and I'm a member of the Charity Tracker team here. And uh, my job will kind of take you through and show you kind of some details as specifically what our, our tool can provide. Now, as Mike shared in some of those videos, uh, we want to provide a safety net where multiple organizations can work together at the same time. So each Charity Tracker network might be established for a particular community footprint. It might be a city, a county, might be over several counties. And you can log into the tool and track information on who's being served. Now, uh, the data that's entered in can be shared, but it can also be reported on for donors and others that might uh, need to, uh, you know, show your impact. And here's, here's the input impact that we have on our community and those partners that we're serving. Now, today I'm going to log into a demo site. If you have any questions as we go through, feel free to use the chat on Zoom. You can uh, send me a message here and be happy to try to address those at the end here. So Charity Tracker is a very secure web-based tool. All you need to access it is really a computer with an internet connection and an up-to-date web browser. Now, Charity Tracker can be used in-house just at one organization, uh, but typically it's used in a, in a collaboration with multiple organizations. And each organization has at least one person uh, who can log into the system. You can have multiple users of the system, but today I'm gonna log in as myself. Now I'd use my email address and password to log in. And up in the top left corner, when I log into the database, you'll see my name, Kyle, in the Caring Center. Let's pretend I'm an organization that provides resources to people in need in the community. Now, I might also use Charity Tracker to track uh, the getting ahead assessment piece. And I will talk about that briefly towards the end. You know, if you are a getting ahead facilitator and you want to use our database to track that information, you sure can. Now, over here on the left, there's a couple buttons. Search, add new case. Those are the main tools of the system. And then there's also a barcode scanning feature using a barcode scanner. If you're an organization that sees a high volume of people in a short period of time, you could use barcode scanning to get people in and out the door quickly, like at a food distribution uh, you know, or an event. Now, in the top right corner, there's a few colored tabs. We have home, my agency, and agencies. Home, this is what we see when we first log in. At the top, there's some community dashboard numbers. These are total, just totals that update each and every day as more people are served across the entire collaborative. Now, I can, of course, generate more detailed statistics for my organization caring center, or if I was the administrator of the network, I could run network-wide reports that might, I might bring to my funders or might bring to donors to get additional grant funds, things like that. So these numbers increase each and every day. There's also a bulletin board tool. We heard some cool stories in those videos about how the bulletin board can be used to get needs met. You could post a bulletin and say, hey, everybody, I have a family that needs a hot water heater. Can anyone help? You can get that need met quickly. Like you already might be part of a community where there's multiple organizations partner together, uh, but our, our tool would just act as like an electronic, like a platform to, to better that, that uh, collaboration. So it doesn't have to replace your existing you know, collaboration. This is just to supplement it. And the bulletin board is a great tool to, to get those uh, communications out quickly. Now, the My Agency tab, each organization on a network, it could be a ministry, nonprofit, government, school, really any type of organization. When they go to their blue My Agency tab, their organization's name and contact information, hours of operation, things like that can all be listed. But I can furthermore list the services that I provide. Now we'll see these services uh, get compiled in what we call a services directory. So all the different partner organizations on the network can list what they offer. Here at the Caring Center, I have clothing that I provide. Maybe we have a clothing closet. Maybe we have a counselor that provides emotional counseling you know, one, one day a week or something. And we also help people with utility bill assistance. Now, if there was a new service that I was just rolling out at my organization, maybe I have a you know, food pantry or something, I could click add service here on the right and I could record that service, put any details in here about my pantry. If there's a limit, you know, one visit per week per household, or you need two forms of ID the first visit you come, you know, I could put any details about it right here. And now these services get compiled in a directory under this tab called agencies. So this is like your directory, it shows all the different partner organizations that you know, are on my collaborative. I can also, you know, when I post a bulletin, these folks might be uh, the, the individuals that will receive that bulletin. I can also have a tab called services where I can see all the different services by all the different partner organizations on my network. Now we'll see these services come into play, one more example here in a minute, 
um, where we can make referrals directly within the system, a closed loop referrals. So you, you might have a person that has a need that you're unable to help with. You can refer them to another organization on your, your network. So let's do a couple quick examples really, really fast. Let's say we have a woman that we're working with. Maybe she's a single mother. She needs help with a, a service that Caring Center offers. Let's say utility bills. So I can click search on the left, type in her name. I can search for her by her name or address, phone number, anything. And if I find her case file, it's like a file in a filing cabinet, I can click on her name to open up her file. Now, please know, if you, if you are sharing this with multiple organizations, a release of information form or consent form is required. And I will show you that here in, in just a moment. But um, the Tabitha has consented that her information can be shared with other organizations. Over here on the right, you might have a photo of Tabitha, some basic information, name, phone number, things like that. Then there's these colored tabs on the right. Now, each colored tab that I'm going to go through is a feature of Charity Tracker that, you know, you can implement. If you don't need that tool, you know, we can turn it off, of course. Personal info, that's an overview. Any information that you choose to collect will be displayed here. It's very customizable. There might be fields that your funder needs to know, you know, what's the primary language spoken in the household, because maybe a grant or some funding opportunity looks at that information. You can create a field. What's the primary language spoken and have the different options. Assistance. This is where I'd go to see any assistance provided to Tabitha in the past by either my organization, the Caring Center, or by other partner organizations on my collaborative. So I could go here and I can see the last time she was served was by me at the Caring Center on March 12th. We provided $300 for rent at that time. A little bit further down in February, Kyle from the Caring Center also worked with her and we did a one hour counseling session. There's the details about it right there. Now, whenever we add a new record to show how we might have assisted her today, let's click add assistance right here. I can choose from a drop down list of whatever the service was that I'm offering. And this could be tracking really anything. She attended a GED prep class that we offer, or she received items of clothing, or we tracked, uh, you know, whatever the list goes on, of course. But I'm just going to choose utility. Maybe we're helping her with $150 for a utility bill. I can record that right there. I always can use discretion also. You know, if I'm using this in a collaborative way, I can keep things private just to my staff and my agency if I'd like. So I can keep things private. You don't have to share everything, uh, especially if the, the nature of your, your certain services might need to be kept private. If you're, if you're using Charity Track, you can always make mark things as private if you needed to. Now, if Tabitha had a need that I was unable to help with, I can always refer her out to another partner on my network. There's a tool called Referral. So let's say she also needed help with food. Let's use food as an example. Uh, basic needs help, needed help with the utility bill and also with food. I can put any details about what's going on. You know, Tabitha shared she lost her job uh, due to a closure from COVID. Can you help her with groceries? Now I can make this referral to another organization on my network that provides a food related service. When I open up this drop down on the right, it brings in all those different services by all the different partners. I can select one and let them know that I'm referring Tabitha to them. They'll get a notification email. They can pick up where I left off and close that loop. They can also update, you know, hey, we helped the person or no, we were unable to help her uh, because her income was too high or whatever the scenario might, might be. So referrals is also a powerful feature in the, the database relationships. We can track household members. Uh, we worked with Tabitha today, but really she, she, she represents a household made up of three people, one adult and two children, Sally, her daughter who's 16 and a son, Tommy, who's six. Documents. You can upload and attach files here under the documents tab. Alerts is a way for you to alert um, anyone who might work with Tabitha about a situation in her life. You could post an alert about, hey, she had a large house fire on such and such a date. That'd be the first screen that pops up whenever we go to her case in the future. Now, outcomes. I hear all the time really, really awesome stories about how the outcomes tool can help people move from a place of crisis to a more self-sustainable place. And again, from the reporting standpoint, you're able to show your impact and show the outcomes. You know, how many people have we helped get their GED? How many people have we helped, you know, decrease their debts or you know, whatever those different goals might be? So under outcomes, we can set like a care plan, like a, a plan of goals that we work with Ms. Cool on. And as she completes those goals, her progress bar moves from left to right. Now, every goal has a status and a due date. If she were to complete this financial mentoring class that she's currently participating in, that's great news. Maybe she showed us a certificate saying she completed that class. I could come under her outcomes area and edit that and update it to complete and close it out. Or if she dropped out of the class, you know, I, could, I could update it to dropped out or something. You have different statuses that you can choose. 
You can also, on certain goals, make action steps because maybe you need to spell things that might not be uh, cut and dry. Hey, go do this thing and it's done. It might be several steps. So we could say, first thing you gotta do is sign up for the class. Then you need to attend all three classes online. Then finally, take exit exam. Now, as Ms. Cool works through each of these steps along the way, I can, I can uh, you know, adjust and, and change those statuses and close things out as I need. Now, this is a collaborative tool. So I might be helping Tabitha with her financial related goals because that's what the Caring Center's focus is on. But another organization on my network might be helping her with her career goals or education goals or family relationship goals. Uh, all these different uh, you know, life areas can be done collaborative, uh, collaboratively and managed all under the same outcomes goal set. And we've heard a lot of funders are looking for that right now. They want to know, you know, um, you know, how are you helping people in certain life areas? So our system can help with that. Now, a few features that we just rolled out, we have an appointments feature where you can schedule someone for an upcoming appointment. They get reminders from the system. We also have a text, SMS text broadcasting feature. So you could text all your clients and say, hey, everybody, we have a new program starting in August. If you're interested, you know, let us know. Or you could create a, an audience, like out of everybody, Maybe you have a program just for women between the ages of 25 and 45. Um, you could, you know, target just that audience and message them from Charity Tracker and say, you know, hey, we have a program just for you. So please know we have a broadcasting feature. We also have a kiosk mode. And that kind of brings me to my next, my next point here is adding new cases to the system. One way is someone could be at home or at a kiosk in a waiting room, and they can put in their information directly into the database. So it would walk them through some basic information um, also some additional demographic data and so forth that you might want to collect. Uh, this is something that the client themselves can fill out and it goes directly into the database. Now, once they fill out their information, let's, let's add someone right now, Sarah Jones is her name. I'd go through and, and fill out any information, again, demographics, income and expense information, household members. Let's say Sarah has a son uh, named Ted. <laughs> her son there, and we can put in any information there about them. Also, they can re actually request assistance from the kiosk. So they can upload documents and say, hey, I need help with my utility bill in the amount of $300 or whatever the, the, needs, the need is. So the data can now be directly inputted either in a waiting room, uh, like on a tablet, kind of like what you have in a doctor's office, or even from home. We have a remote intake feature that would allow Sarah Jones to securely enter the data into the database for then a staff member of the caring center to follow up with Sarah without having to you know, tie up a staff member and putting in Sarah's information. So it really expanded COVID uh, you know, in the last year plus has been, uh, you know, we've been trying to be innovative with ways that our system can be used remotely in social distancing. We also have that release information form that I alluded to earlier. This is a consent form that Sarah could agree to to share her information with other organizations on the network. So that release form is required if any information is gonna be shared, <clears throat> pardon me, outside of the four walls of the caring center. Uh, you know, so again, you can use Charity Tracker in-house, you don't have to share information, but a collaborative is really, uh, you know, a, a really good way to, to use the tool. So we've looked at entering data and just in closing, just a couple of minutes uh, about reporting. So the data that goes in, we can run reports on that information. Now, every organization on a network can run reports under their blue My Agency tab. There's an area called Reports. We can also run collaborative reports, um, you know, that we'll look at, you know, here, here we can also look at as well. But I, I did want to talk a moment about with the getting ahead process, uh, with the getting ahead workbook, um, you are able to assess clients over time uh, based upon the getting ahead curriculum. So just kind of before we go into reports to talk a little bit about that. Under a client's case file, we have a feature called assessments here. Now, John Smith, let's say he's an investigator and in getting ahead. Now, maybe he's graduating from the class right now, so we wanna take a second assessment. So we have baseline assessment data that's captured on the self-assessment of resources, the stability scale, and return on investment indicators. Now, those three pieces of the assessment, A, B, and C, are all captured. You, you do that one time for baseline data, and let's say today, as John's you know, graduating from the Getting Ahead program, we want to take a second assessment. So under the purple assessments tab, I click the add assessment button and Charity Tracker will walk us through 
the assessment pieces, starting first with the self-assessment of resources. So it goes through the different 11 indicator, uh, 11 areas right here, the stability scale, also return on investment information. So if you're doing getting ahead, uh, we can dig deeper into this. You know, if you want to reach out to us uh, after today's webinar, we can go further into that. But reports are available, let me show here on my screen, for getting ahead for the individual investigator themselves, like John Public, the person that we've been working with, we can take an assessment to create a baseline assessment, maybe upon graduation, and then follow-up assessments can be taken from there. And reports like this can show for Mr. Public where he was when he first came into the program, where he is today, what's gone up, what's gone down, what stayed the same. So reports like this can be generated for just that one person, John Public, but also program-wide. And you can compare, you know, different groups or classes, um, you know, with one another. You can also run reports across all of your groups, all of your classes at one time. So as an example, you know, for the different self-assessment of resource areas, we can see 37% have increased their financial resources, 50% have increased their emotional resources, 25% their mental. So this is really important information to be able to show not only, you know, is getting is getting ahead effective, but how effective is it? And uh, maybe there's certain... Um, pieces of the getting ahead model that charity tracker can help you identify, you know, Hey, this is, this is working or this isn't working or, Hey, we need to include more people uh, from different diverse backgrounds. So reporting is really a big part of charity tracker, not just putting the information in, but getting the information out in a way that tells a story and shows your impact. So let's just uh, take one more quick look at a report or two. Now, no matter what report you run from Charity Tracker, it's a two-step process to get the information out. And I'd like to just kind of highlight these two steps, just so you can kind of see um, you know, that it's very flexible, that we know this is not one size fits all. You might have a network of 90 plus different organizations working together. Each of those 90 agencies have likely different goals for reporting. So on step one, we can filter our report by many different things, maybe by demographic information. I just want to look at all my clients that are female, um, that live in a certain zip code between the ages of this and this. You, know, you can use these filters to narrow down your report by certain parameters. We click next and that brings us to the second step of the two-step process. Now in the second step, we can use our mouse and pick and choose what we want to see on the final report. There might be elements that I don't need so I wanna uncheck that information so it's not included. Other things that I do, so I can pick and choose what I wanna see. Now here's an example of, of a report for the Caring Center. So we have seven people that we're working with under their outcomes goals area. Again, that's that goal setting component where we set goals and work with them over time to complete those goals. Out of those seven people, we get a quick breakdown as far as a distribution of where those seven people are and getting to 100%, completing all of their goals. So as of today, uh, June 29th, we see where everyone is uh, from zero to 100%. Below that chart, we can see each person like John Smith, where he is in the process, what his next goal due date is, uh, any information about him. So I can keep track of each person that I'm working with and where they are so they don't fall through the cracks. Um, also here, like we can see the next due date, our system will notify um, us when it's time to follow up with Tabitha on her upcoming goal or John Smith, whoever we're working with, we can run reports and, and follow up with people. Uh, but there are all, also our notifications that are sent from the system to us to, to let us know it's time to follow up. We even have like a heat map report that would show across your service area, where are clients coming to you for assistance? And this might help you with strategic planning. You know, hey, we, we, we have a lot of clients coming to us from Waterloo and Leeton. Maybe we should partner with other organizations across the river, you know, Leeton to, to better serve that community. There might be organizations that are serving the same people in Leeton that, that we're serving over here in Florence. So you can use this for that. Also identifying service gaps, you know, maybe there's a lot of people need, needing transportation services and they're not enough out there. You know, um, you could run reports and see what's, what's that gap, you know, how many people People are requesting help with transportation and not getting that that service that they're needing so um, in closing there's a lot of different tools here i know i threw a lot at you in a short period of time um, but please note mike and i and the rest of our team here at charity tracker would be honored to uh you know talk with you maybe provide more of a um, a focused demonstration for you if there's interest in um, using any of the tools from keeping track of the getting ahead assessments to this community collaboration piece that we talked about today so thank you again, Phil, Lynn, and everybody for your time. And if there's any questions, you know, please feel free to ask in the chat. Thank you. Well, thank you, Kyle. Boy, um, you know, I've been looking at this kind of presentation over the years, and you guys are getting better and better and have more and more to show. <laughs>
wonderful work. Um, Lynn, let us know if there's questions in the chat. Uh, one of my questions is, uh, how do you engage uh, the United Ways and funders and foundations and so on? How, how do they get drawn into this? Sure. So I could kind of address that. So a lot of, more and more, I, what I'm hearing is a partner organization will just find this on their own for like a solo, you know, maybe an internally focused search. Like, hey, I'm, a, I'm an organization. We use paper to keep track of our clients. We're not able to show, you know, our board, you know, effective reports. But then they hear in a demonstration, they hear about, you know, hey, well, you can use this in-house. That's great. But you could also partner with like the United Way or Community Foundation or a food bank or whoever and, and bring this into more of a collaboration piece. A light bulb <laughs> comes on. And I think, uh, um, you know, hearing from like a United Way partner organization, uh, they call up the United Way and say, hey, we found this, this tool that might help all the United Way partners, you know, work together. That's how a lot of the conversations start. It's, uh, you know, someone just searching, they find us or hear about us, and then they bring it to the United Way. And then from there, we usually um, uh, we'll do like a group webinar, you know, kind of like we're doing here on Zoom. So the United Way will host it and bring bring partners of faith based nonprofit, any any organization really into a virtual room and get everyone around the table and kind of hear hear the thoughts on that. So um, and then other United Ways will just hear about us from you know, case studies or things like that. So I don't know if that helps. So what it does, it, it sounds to me like you're offering United Way and other funders um, something that will help them. Certainly. They, they, need, they need to do it in a, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, it serves their mission. Exactly. Their, their, their purpose in a community, one of their many purposes, but one of them is to bring everyone together. And they're, they're likely already doing that, but they might not have like a platform for day in, day out, just, um, you know, helping to, to keep that connection. And then for down the road, running reports to show that, that, important data uh, that they need to show, you know, hey, here's where the funds are going. Here's who we're helping. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's really a match, you know, match, perfect, perfect match. I saw in those videos that uh, there were rooms full of people that were talking to each other. And um, I wonder if when you're putting this up in a community, if, if that isn't part of the process, is yeah. having, having people from different places begin to go, hey, here's a new tool and look what we could do together. What is the process for introducing it to a community? Well, we call it, uh, it goes from uh, a, new, a new type of conversation. Instead of one of an individual agency feeling like they're all alone and are doing the best they can, they realize, well, what if we partner with others that are doing similar things? Maybe we could handle or be more resourceful in how our resources are distributed and allocated where they're most needed. And so a conversation. So Charity Tracker has been a catalyst for what we call the community conversation okay. and uh, encourages people to get together with each other and say, you know what, um, you know, we can do this a whole lot better if we all work together. And and maybe it's something that we need to experiment with. And the first thing we need to do is increase communication and cooperation uh, within the different helping agencies in the community as one person in, in our community said to me one day, said, Mike, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. And we're wasting a lot of resources and we're, we're not being resourceful in how we distribute our resources. And Charity Tracker is helping us to resolve those issues. And so now we're better together. And now, this just kind of, and the conversation gets broader in its context when it goes out, mainly starts maybe with a faith-based group, then it goes out to a faith-based nonprofit working together, then it goes into business and funders and then government. And you can see that some of the, you saw that in Huntsville, it's a top down where the government has gotten involved and it's grassroots. So we kind of like it when they come together in such a way where it's grassroots and grass tops yeah, coming they, together yeah. and then you got a great collaborative. So <laughs> does, does your organization, Simon Solutions, and uh, facilitate those conversations in a community or are they coached by you and then they manage it how does how do you you know make the case for the funders and others the government and so on do you get involved in that your staff or do you count on the people on the ground doing that well of course we're limited uh, uh kyle's in arkansas i'm in alabama and it'd be hard for us to go to every community across the country and make this happen so fortunately we found out that if we'll bring the tool in 
And then the people in the community say, we'll, we'll, we'll take it from here. And in fact, that's the only way charity traffic can become effective to being not only a care network, but evolve into a care collaborative. It has to be the grassroots or the grass tops people within the community. The stakeholders themselves, they see the value in care networking. And then they, they go and talk with others about it and say, let's give this thing a try and see what happens. In Charleston, as you see, it, evol it evolved to 300 organizations. And it was all handled by that one lady that you saw, Kathy Easley. She was the only person who went out there and just for some reason, it just, it caught a blaze and people saw the value in it. And now they're moving forward with some really, really innovative approaches to lasting solutions. And, uh, and to fill a couple point, of questions. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, Lynn, I see those questions. I'll go through some of those. Um, and, and also, uh, to, to speak to Vils, you know, we may coach someone who might want to bring this in, but typically, as Mike was saying, it's, it's there in the community, they bring it to the funder, to the United Way, you know, usually. Um, thank you, Jennifer, for the kind words there. Uh, so when did the software launch? Uh, it was 2006, uh, right in that area is when we started in Northwest Alabama with the United Way and several partners there. So we've been at this, um, 15 years or so. Uh, and the United Way is one of the clients of the software in different communities. So nationwide, you know, uh, United Way, the, the you know, parent organization is not a client, but uh, we serve over 100, 100, 100 and something different United Ways across the country uh, for different communities. Some are over just a, a county, others are several counties. Uh, so United Way usually is a, a good um because of the nature of their organization, they're they're a great administrator for charity tracker because they can bring it in, rally the rally the troops, you know, get everyone on the same page. So the United Way uh, is typically a part of a lot of our networks, but not all, not all. Uh, Anne asks, how does this compare with Clarity? Clarity is uh, a, a good system. I, I'm not sure much about it. I know a lot of. Um, maybe continuum of care, like HUD funded organizations use Clarity as like an HMIS, which is like a homeless management information system. Um, now, Charity Tracker does have an HMIS component. We, we serve several uh, continuum of cares or homeless care networks. And uh, I would imagine it'd be very similar to Clarity in that. I, I don't know uh, exactly, you know, feature by feature what's, what's similar, but uh, Clarity is a, a, an option for sure. And then how much does it cost? Beth asked about cost. We'd be happy to send more information to you via email. Let me uh, leave you my uh, our, our contact information. Uh, but basically, it's it starts out at twenty dollars a month per user, and we have three levels of service. We have a basic level, which is twenty dollars a month, the plus level, which is thirty dollars a month, and then pro, which is forty. So it's twenty, thirty, forty. Um, that's just our standard pricing. We also have volume discount. If you try to bring, you know, if you decide to bring this in as a collaborative, those prices, of course. Um, you know, go down with volume. So uh, 20, 30, 40 is the price per month. And I'd be happy to email you, Beth, or anyone else that's interested. Um, uh, just feel free to reach out. Our, our email address, Lynn, is it okay if I share it here? Absolutely, please. So uh, our, the best contact information is info, I-N-F-O, at charitytracker.net, info at charitytracker.net. And our phone number, 888-764-0633. That's 888-764-0633. Seven six four zero six three three, and I'll include that in here uh, in the chat. If there's any additional questions or anything else you, you have for Mike or I, uh, that'd be the best way to get a hold of us. And when this is being introduced to an organization or several organizations, I, I assume that uh, Simon Solutions provides the training. We do, yes. So uh, we have all the time we're doing like community informational sessions where we talk about the, the system, the benefits and demonstrate it. And we can do that via Zoom. Um, and then also after it launches, we also do training sessions which are more in depth, but they're recorded. And uh, as new agencies are onboarded, that, that recorded video can be shared with anybody. And is that, uh, is there a cost for that or is that oh. in the monthly cost? Yeah, there's no additional cost, And we don't have any setup fees or, you know, hidden costs. Um, you know, aside from that pricing that I shared earlier. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if there's any other questions. I'm not seeing any. Again, Kyle has put his contact information. So if you would like to follow up with him, please take that information. I know that through the years, it's been easy to talk with him and to get information and to have feedback quickly. 
So thank you. You know what? What I see here is that this is just an amazing, uh, amazing work, and it makes it so easy for people. Uh, and when I think about how bridges communities could use this, you know, they already have a common language. They train one another. There's bridges trainers out there talking to different organizations and getting them on board. There might be two or three places that are doing getting ahead. And to me, it seems like a very natural thing to do to make life smoother. And I think when I look at this from the point of view of someone who's in poverty or who's struggling, uh, this is just designed to take away all the extra time they have to take to find things, right? To locate them. Uh, it reduces the cost to them financially from going to place to place to place, right? Uh, and searching all that out on their own. I, I think that that's one of the most wonderful things because you know there are so many hassles about being under-resourced and struggling to get by. And if this can smooth out life for people, that's just a huge, huge benefit to them too. So I wonder what other kind of benefits uh, you've heard about from the people who are the, if you'd say, end user of this. Well, the one thing that we're hearing is how it's transforming the social safety net or the helping system within the community because having Charity Tracker and the ability to connect the dots is providing people with greater access to knowledge and resources and opportunities that can help transform their lives. We have discovered that we're in a community this is not available that many people, there's wide gaping holes in the social safety net and people fall through the cracks and they don't get to, to have access to those. So, you know, bringing in a tool like Cherry Tracker kind of shores up those, those, uh, those gaping holes in the social safety net and kind of streamlines the process for people. Because a lot of times a person will go to a helping agency and the helping agent will say, that's all I can help you with. And the question will be, well, where can I go for the rest of the help that I need? And the person will say, I don't know. But that has changed with Charity Tracker because now when a person comes in for help and the agency says, I, I'm limited, that's all I can do. Hold on though, don't worry about it. I'm gonna help you find the, the need that you are. Give me just a minute and I'm gonna turn around here and get on my laptop. And within seconds, I'm gonna find you another agency I can refer you to. That is what's been amazing. Yeah. I I would imagine that this would have an impact on individuals' attitudes towards each other. You know, from the, those who are in poverty and those who are more resourced. I can just imagine that changing because of those interactions. Do you, in a broader sense, um, in the places that have been using this longer, find that there's any kind of evidence of a cultural change or Absolutely. community change in attitude Absolutely. towards people in poverty. Do you, do you have any way of measuring that or knowing anything about that? Well, you saw in the Huntsville video, one of the ladies says that Charity Tracker is changing the way we're doing things. And the lady says, and we should. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that, you know, when I say uh, Charity Tracker is, is, is in many respects unprecedented or even revolutionary in some communities, it is bringing about the word and, you know, and I love the word because I think it's something we need to move toward as far as helping people in the communities, that's systemic change. So yeah. we need a broader context of mm -hmm. knowing that no one or two agencies within the community can be all things to, whole, to all people. But if they were willing to work together, now we have the possibility of actually moving the needle on poverty, hunger and other uh, complex community challenges, but it, it's a process. And like I said, it requires, it requires technology tools, skills, craftsmen to know how to use those tools, and then a, a comprehensive coordinated approach in which there is a path to transformation that not only that the agencies can plug into, I'll do my part of our job, but I've given the person a place where they are a streamlined process all the way to abundant living. Now that can only happen when there is a charity tracker network and a care collaborative that's willing to, to walk it out, you know, willing to give whatever it takes to make it happen. And we're seeing that happen in communities. And it's much to the surprise of the people that they didn't know they could do it. But now that they are moving toward it, they go, I, I guess it's broadened their vision 
for the possibilities. And, and that's what, and, and if Joey was on, the, on here, he would tell you about the amazing conversations he's had with community stakeholders across the country. You're going, I did not know that we could actually move the needle, but now we have hope that we can. Yeah. I love that you brought up the issue of systemic change. And obviously this is institutional change and community change, right? Um, I can't, and pardon me, don't be surprised, but I would think that if people already had the bridges language in a community where they were already doing bridges in a big way, uh, you would, this is a tool for making policy change too. And that would be a common language that they would have and embrace this. I think bridges communities ought to take this and run with it and <laughs> put the two together, right? Uh, very, very practical stuff you're tell talking about here. It's all very practical, very, very real in terms of what the people in poverty are experiencing. Do we have other questions, Lynn, that we should uh, present? I just see, uh, Kyle, that another one popped in about can the clients enter their own data? Yes, uh, so they can enter their own data with the kiosk mode. Now, as far as the self-assessment return on invest uh, return on uh, investment indicators and the stability scale, that's something that's not currently incorporated in the client kiosk. Uh, but I believe this is this is uh, we're working on this. I believe I'm not in those conversations, but I believe we're moving that direction. Um, so I, I would think that data would be able to be entered into the system in the future. But right now, yeah, that would be very helpful, Beatrice. Good, good question. <laughs> Kyle, if you would just enter your contact information once more, sure. we're going to need to wrap it up for today. So any last minute questions, put them in the chat. Any last minute comments, Phil or Mike? Well, I'd like to say that it's, you know, from the very first time we met you guys and we came down to Huntsville and you've come to so many of our conferences, uh, it's been a complete joy. And uh, and I think that you just emulate that and make that uh, sort of the culture of everything you do. And I want to honor you for that. And thank you. You guys are great. Mm -hmm.